and I've been looking forward to tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we now present the Rage of the Golden Garter. Withenshaw, the Garter. Uh, we're going to start our show proper now by introducing you to Tommy Cooper, uh, who used to keep me up till I don't know four o'clock in the morning, uh, waiting for him, and the taxi driver is falling asleep waiting to take him to his hotel. Tommy Cooper, um, he he seemed to be able to do anything, clubs, cabaret, one-nighters. It was just, it was just phenomenal. He was just so loved. Tommy Cooper, of course. Yeah, you worked with Tommy Cooper. Yeah, I mean, we came home as like a stooge for him. Yeah. What happened, I tell you, remember what happened? Yeah. He, 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 he had some sort of rhyme. I am not my father's, yeah. sort of, that sort of Who thing. Who am I? Yeah, and then he, he, he I, you, you had to ask it to him. Yeah, and he came up with the wrong answer, of course. Yeah. So, uh, forget the actual. I mean, it was 46 years ago. Yeah. I mean, he maybe have seven suitcases full of his gags, and he'd look down at them at backstage and say, what rubbish am I going to do tonight? And I cleaned that up a little bit. Well, in those days, my consisted of uh, comedy magic. And at the time, there was only myself and Tommy Cooper, basically. 30 days has October. October, June, and no wonder. <laughs> All the rest have peanut butter, except Grandma who rides a green tricycle. <laughs> now there's lots of magicians, lots of comedy magic. A friend of mine made love to a horse. I said, what was it like? He said, Pfft. <laughs> <laughs> we, had the, um, we had the monopoly on the market in those days. There was only myself and Tommy Cooper, basically. Now there's lots of magicians, lots of comedy magic people, or so-called comedy magic people. Uh, I remember one night where um, I think Malcolm Allison came in and he asked whether he could see Tommy Cooper, meet Tommy Cooper. So, and so they so said, yeah, absolutely, if he wants to come up afterwards. And so kept Malcolm Allison back and he went, took him up into the room and left him uh, with his friends talking to Tommy Cooper. Anyway, everybody left the, the, the theatre and Tommy was still upstairs with uh, having a drink, as he did, and being hospitable and, and probably having a few tricks. When I knocked the door, because all everybody had gone except the night watchman, and Tommy opened the door and he said, uh, what do you want? I said, I just thought I'd just um, I'd pop up and see if all right, because everybody's gone from the club now. He said, but every night you come up here, and you want my drink, and you 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 indulge you. I've got can't you see I've got guests here? Like you can imagine, I was absolutely fuming. So I closed the door, and a few seconds later, he opened the door and he went, <laughs> "Come on in." So um, I went in, and everybody thought it was really funny. Well, I, I remember because it came over the telly. Can Dave go to the uh, uh, the star dressing room and speak to Tommy? So I walked down to the star dressing room, knocked on the door, Mr. Cooper. I'll reply, which I opened it, but there's nobody in the room in the, in the, when you first walked in. But the, the door through to the, um, the, the showers and the, the, the actual dressing room, I could hear it being pushed in there. So I opened the door, I knocked on the door, I said, Mr. Cooper, and I opened the door, and he was there, he, he's full drape on with his fez on. And he, and he says to me, have you got a beer, Matt? And uh, a few minutes later, um, the door knocked. And uh, so Tommy opened the door. And it was Mac, the stage manager. So he said, what do you want? So Mac said, I just thought I'd just come up and, and uh, say, say, say good night, Mr. Cooper. I just, uh, you know, he said, every night you're coming up here, you're drinking my alcohol and, you know, I've got friends and I've even got the assistant general manager here. And, you know, so Mac kind of went away and come, <laughs> that was it. So he said, so he opened the door again to Tommy Cooper and said, ha <laughs> come in, you know, it's a bit of a joke. Anyway, then we had Ian McGowan. The job I did at the Golden Garter was a stage manager. Who hey, then? Um, and uh, he knocked at the door, and it was exactly the same process. And that, that, that's a vivid memory of that particular night, how, how funny the guy was, and also. But he used to do all kinds of tricks, and used to prepare tricks for the stage management and the management after hours, and it was just fascinating. And uh, one particular time, he, he asked Howard and myself, would we teach him the Sheikh of Arabi and the ukulele? We went up to his dressing room after he was finished his act. And all he's got on is a pair of 
boxer shorts, polka dot uh, black socks and suspenders. And we just burst out laughing when he opened the door. I mean, it was hilarious. And then we sat down and he's got his ukulele. He said, here's a ukulele. Teach me. Well, he had fingers like a bunch of bananas. And there was no way he's ever going to play a violin, a ukulele, or any string else. And he said, oh, right, well, we'll forget that one. Thanks very much. Uh, the only the only problem with Tommy Cooper is he did black his bottle of gin, uh, and and two or three of them, I'm afraid. To get him on stage was an absolute nightmare. The stage managers and ourselves always used to put the clocks back an hour, so it all looked like it was much earlier. But we had to pick him up from the station. He missed the station completely, uh, and went on to to do his show in a completely different town. So eventually, we did pick him up and brought him back to the uh, Golden Garter. We got him on stage about an hour late. He had this wonderful, wonderful act of a white gate in the middle of the stage, and he would do his infectious laugh. He would then walk on stage, walk through the white gate, and then walk back off stage again, and that was it, to the hilarity of the audience. And on the night he did it with me, he walked through the white gate, walked straight ahead, fell off the stage and broke his leg. So we had to call the ambulance, we had to cast him away, and um, that was my first experience, if you like, of Mr. Cooper, live on stage, um, and we had to give everybody tickets for another show, because obviously we didn't have a top of the bill. Twelve months later, once his leg had been fixed, I met him again at the night out in Birmingham, which I was running at the time, and... He said to me, he wanted to see me, he said, do I know a person called Paul Lillicrap? And I remember the manager there, his name was Paul Lillicrap. I know, great name, but that was his name. Do I know a person called Paul Lillicrap? And I said, no, I've never heard of him. And he said, um, well, this guy's suing me for falling off the stage at the Golden Garter. I said, oh, I can't believe anybody would do that, Mr. Cooper. And with that, exited his dressing room fairly quickly. But what a, what a character. Tommy Cooper. Yeah, he did a very long show. And um, one of the best and funniest acts I've ever seen. Always, uh, he was on for probably two weeks at a time in most cases. And he'd always have the extra tricks for the staff. Because the staff were there every single night and they would know his routine. But he was always out of routine. We always used to have to, I think Matt the stage man used to set two trestles up and he used to choose which stuff he's going to use that particular night. So the, the, the band and the staff saw something new every night. Brilliant. He was absolutely sensational. A great magician, which no, not many people seem to realise. Uh, yeah, Tommy, I know who worked with Tommy Cooper, but uh, his brother used to run the magic shop in Slough. Lovely.